We're doing something weird today. Um, going to my RV, a million little prep things I gotta do before I hit the road. I leave again on July 30th, which, yeah. So I have to get the tires changed in a couple weeks because these China bombs that came on this thing are now a few years old and they have a good amount of miles on them. Um, and so I just don't trust them with all the bikes and stuff and be going on the road 5,000 miles. So um, I'm headed to the rig to change the oil and the generator, but I'm gonna do it in a, a way that's weird to me, but it's all the rage for all the RVers. So we'll be back in just a second. So I'm going into my storage lot here where the, where the rig lives. Um, the generator is built into my my rig. It's a part of the nose. Um, you know, it's it's hard built in there and has its own fuel tank in the back. That is where the gas pump attaches and all that stuff because it is a toy hauler. Um, what I'm reading is RVers out there saying don't change the oil the traditional way. So there is a hole in the bottom of the floor of my rig where the, the generator sits inside its own little compartment there. And there's a drain plug cover and then a drain plug. But the reality is, if you can picture a, a, a pretty heavy duty toy hauler, the floor sits several feet off the ground. So, not several, uh, three and a half feet off the ground. So not real convenient when you're trying to drain Oh good, my neighbor's gone so I can park next to my own rig. That's nice, that's a luxury. Anyway, it's not real convenient when you're trying to drain into an oil pan on the ground. It's gonna go everywhere, right? So I'm reading about all these dudes that they use a pump and they pump their oil out and it just makes life easier and you go, the pump goes into the, your, obviously your fill tank of your oil uh, and goes through this little 12 volt pump through that thing out the other end, out of hose and into your 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 drainage jobby niner action um i have never done this before some people have said i can't believe you haven't heard of that i've never heard of this before where you just pump the oil out of your it's really small engine i'm reading where dudes do it on a motorcycles i don't know about that but this generator is a cummins owning 4000 it only takes two quarts of oil and it's due for its maintenance again the rig is got i don't know how many hours are on it that's not important because the rig's over a year old and then who knows how long it sat before I bought it, that's how RVs go. It might be two years old. And generator's never been maintenance. So I went ahead and ordered the Cummins Onan maintenance kit, which I don't normally do that kind of stuff, but I, because I never screwed with it before I did. And it's two quarts oil, oil filter, fuel filter, and a spark plug for 80 bucks. So they didn't kiss me first or anything, but whatever, at least I know it's exactly the right crap. So I'm gonna try this like draining the oil thing. So I'm gonna run the generator for a couple minutes to warm it up, just a tad. And then I brought all my stuff in the back of the truck and, and we're gonna do this. So maybe it'll be a disaster. We'll find out together. Who'd have thunk I'd ever reach a point in my life where I'm looking for the best lighting. Anyway, so here's what I bought. This was $20. Nice and cheap, but ratings are really high on the, the Amazons and the Googles and the whatnot. So this little pump, in theory, we're gonna find out if it's a piece of shit this minute here. It's got, you know, alligator clips hooked directly onto you. Let go, let go uh, directly to your battery. Uh, and then you've got an arrow here that shows you the flow. And it came with these two hoses. This is your inlet hose and your outlet hose. And it came with the uh, hose clamps you need. And I, you know, clamped her on and, and that's about it. I mean, this is not rocket science in theory. Uh, I gotta go start the generator for a minute. And then, uh, let that warm up for a second and then i'm gonna stick the hose down the inlet and this seems insane to me but either it'll work great or we're gonna find out together that it's bullshit all right so hang on una momento por favor the rig came with an interstate battery i'm really kind of surprised by that oh no oh come on did i leave that the police tell me i didn't leave that on <laughs> okay there's a i believe i left the power on inside the coach man i'm gonna go check that i'll be back and if either it's me or this actually just went flat damn i hate it when i do something stupid yeah i left the power on in the coach on accident there's a there's a battery disconnect kill switch in there that i religiously turn off the one time i need it not to i forgot 
And uh, so I need to pull the truck in front. I'm just gonna plug it into a bit. I didn't bring jumper cables with me because I'm stupid. But when I pull the truck around front, I can just plug into the truck. It'll give enough juice to start. So just a delay with a thunderstorm coming. You know, this is weird. But I'm holding this little line in the tank. And she's pulling down through the pump, through that line and into my oil drain bucket and seems to be working. I'll let it run for about two minutes to warm up. Probably should have let it run a little longer because the oil's not very hot. You know, oil's a little funky looking. You can see it, it's certainly, it's been sitting, you can tell. And again, this thing's been used several times, but not like as often as a lot of RVers use it probably. I mean, because we have power most of the places we go, but I just, the freaking bugs are gonna eat my eyes. Yeah, so I'm gonna do this for a while and when all the oil gets out, We'll refill her. The fuel filter is in a place that I don't know how that's supposed to come out. That'll be interesting. Uh, change the spark plug. Air filter already. Air filter's nothing to it. It's under that plate right there with a thumb screw with a wing nut. Pull the plate off. Another wing nut. Pull that off. Filter pulls out. New one goes in. Didn't film that because if you need help with that, you need help. So um, let me let this go for a while. I had had the line in too far, so I pulled it out to where it's just now down in the, look at this sucker. I mean, like it's doing the job. I am pretty friggin' amazed, honestly, that this is doing this well. Um, I mean, cleanup's still gonna be a pain, right? I mean, cleanup, I'm still gonna have an oily ass little pump to mess with and you know, this, that, and the other, but you know, instead of pulling a plug from under there and you can see the drop and making a damn mess in a rental storage lot. I don't know, I think, oh, now it's raining. Great. Thankfully, this is almost done. So let me get that this. But I think this is pretty cool. Next, we're gonna go inside and test this mobile internet thing real quick. All right, so that's done. Um, it pulled, it's like 1.6 quarts. And it, I took an, a quart and a half or so to fill her back up. So it pulled all about all the oil out now i said something earlier that was wrong i said it came that this kit i bought was 80 bucks and it came with a fuel filter a oil filter and whatnot it does not come with an oil filter if someone's out there is confused that little generator does not have an oil filter they were not so that kit comes with two quarts of oil an air filter a fuel filter and a spark plug uh, i did not change a fuel filter because i don't think it necessarily needs it number one number two and it was going to be a bigger job than I wanted to tackle today. Just just being full disclosure, it just was more than I wanted to do today. Because it's under, um, what would you call it, the inverter controller. And I'm like, man, my luck is I'm going to crack that thing or something, pulling it out, and that caused problems. So I didn't do the, the, the fuel filter. Maybe I'll do a little research, and if there's an easy way to do it, I'll come back and do that. But that's, you know, nothing to it. Um, the least thing I was worried about was that. I just want to really get the oil changed. Spark plug was a little funky, so, you know, glad that was done. This is the inside of my rig. Some of you said, what does it look like? I've shown it before, but you never know. Um, this is the back. That's the door that goes down. The bike's call come up inside. That is a queen size bed. That's a little one's bed, so it stays locked up. I don't let anyone sleep on that except her and my niece. And then these two make a bed also. Um, cabinets, big ass window, fridge, toilet, master bedroom. We can go look in there if you want. It's where the magic happens. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it's messy or not. She might kill me. But king size bed. Uh, this is called the Heartland Fuel 305. One of the reasons we bought it is because A, king size bed. Um, B, built in generator. C, biggest cargo uh, carrying capacity. Uh, the rig weighs about 9,200 pounds dry and empty and can go to 14.7, so do the math. It's like it holds almost 5,000 pounds of cargo, which you take on, figure 1,000 pounds in water, clothes, gasoline, whatnot. Um, but I'll back up here. This is my, my load plan for Sturgis, is uh, CVO here. This slide comes in, kind of obviously. CVO here, front wheel right there. Uh, Johnny Cash, the Ultra Limited right there, and the golf cart right here. I've measured it all out 6,000 times. It should fit with several inches to spare in all directions, but you never know. Worst case scenario, 
well, one thing I could do is if I really can't fit the two baggers in line, the golf cart's gonna be fine. If I can't fit the golf cart, the, the, the two baggers in line, then I may have to take the Heritage instead of the CVO and the missus is only gonna be there for, you know, five days, she may have to ride the Heritage. Uh, or worst, worst, worst case scenario that nothing works, then she's gonna have to backseat it. But it's not gonna happen. I'm not worried about it. I'm gonna get both these baggers in here. Cause again, last year I had two, I had my CVO and my buddy's Ultra Classic next to each other. Plenty of room back here. Uh, I know the golf cart is actually no wider than a Harley bagger. It's real narrow. So we should be fine there. And again, I have measured this a million different ways and, and even have a load procedure lit, uh, written down and everything. But um, I got some mobile internet to use, but I'm going to uh, do a separate video on that because I think it might be interesting to RVers and stuff. But there you go. Can you use a vacuum pump to change your oil in your generator or any small engine? Yes. Yeah. Is it always better? I don't know. In my situation for where this sits and not wanting to get oil all over the concrete in a storage lot, the technically I'm not supposed to be changing oil in. Um, yeah, it's great for that. So there you go, man. I'll put the link down below to that $20 pump. If you have small engines, you gotta change your oil in a lot. Um, it works better, I guarantee, than those manual ones. And also the manual ones, if you know what I'm talking about, they only have like a two quart capacity. This doesn't matter. This is just wherever you're pumping into it'll just keep pumping so if you got a big old drum that you pump oil into it'll just keep going so but the verdict is i like it so um uh, comment down below questions whatnot uh there you go there you have it. there you are we'll talk soon take care of each other out there bye